Hello and welcome to my Being One channel. Today we're going to go more into depth about core beliefs and how do we identify them. Now I've spoken about that, about noticing what you're thinking and feeling, but a lot of people go, well Kim, how do I do that? So I'm going to give you an example today of how a core belief influences a lot of your thoughts and uh, even goes in it, you, all the thoughts you may have. Uh, thoughts are sort of like layered. You have the ones that you may think more frequently, but then there's underneath, there's more thoughts. We actually have, if you actually follow your pattern of thoughts from one thought to another, to another, to another, and so on, you would see how many thoughts you can develop within a two minute time frame. So today I chose an example where my main core belief will be I'm afraid to fail, I'm worth nothing. So how do I find that core belief that that's really the one that's uh, influencing my reality, that's pulling in these negative experiences? So I start looking at sentences I tell myself, such as, I have to do everything perfect or people will think I'm not good. So I become maybe even a bit of a perfectionist where nothing is ever good enough, where everything has to be sort of my way and has to face this certain way or not that way. So that will influence more and more my thought patterns. I hate to lose. You may have that thought when you feel you think. It's a perception again. Because don't forget, this is what is fueling your perception when you look into reality. So you're going to have a feedback system thinking that I hate to lose and I'm going to have certain emotions coming with that. The next one you may say often in your mind is, I'm such an idiot, I should know better. So when you do make a mistake of what you quantify as a mistake, makes you think, I'm an idiot, I should know better. And then you become really strict with yourself. Another one is, I, I'm fat, I'm such a failure, I can't control my body, I'm always eating, I can't stop this, this uh, cravings that I'm getting. And then you start becoming really, again, strict with your body, strict with yourself. You may go into really hard, rigid diets, and then you may think, okay, it's working, but then you're failing, and then it's a, a cycle that you keep doing again and again. The next one I wrote down, I'm not as good as the others, because when you look into reality and if you fear a failure, you're going to compare yourself. And sometimes these, when you compare yourself, you just can't live up to those uh, comparisons that you're making with others around you. So when you notice these little sentences that are created that come from your core belief, because your core belief is the main uh, source of power to those thoughts, and then there's many. These are just a few examples. When you start noticing these sentences, you'll start noting the emotions that go with them, such as fear, anxiety, anger, sadness. Now, I've only put a few according to this type of core. This is just an example. It's a simple one. So when I'm feeling really fat and it's not working, I'm going into fear, anxiety. Then I get really angry with myself when I can't maintain what I think through my perception I should look like. And then I'm a failure when I can't hold it. The same thing if I'm not good as others. I get really anxious. Oh my God, I'm never going to be as good as them. Oh, I need to work harder. I need to be perfect. If I'm not perfect, then I'm angry again with myself. And then I start self-loathing myself. And then comes more and more, I'm worth nothing. Then your behavior, because of these sentences and because of the emotions, I'll start having behavioral patterns because this is having such an influence on myself. So I may procrastinate. I'll do it tomorrow because there's a fear. I can't do this. I don't care anymore. I'll just let it go. And then you do nothing and you sit and you wait. Waiting is better than losing in your mind, in your thought process. You may have a perfectionist, I have to do it my way, and it becomes obsessive to the point where you can get OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, where it actually you'll start having these thoughts of more perfectionism, wash my hands more. So you may have those kinds of behaviors. This is not in glue, I'm just giving examples so that you notice in your behavior that there are thoughts that, that where, you, where you can start from to look for. Addictions, when you're so, so wrapped up, I'm worth nothing and I'm so afraid, you could bite your nails, you could smoke cigarettes, you can eat. It can be all kinds of addictions, even over-exercising. If you're terrified of being fat, you may even over-exercise yourself. So those things are always to soothe your feeling, I'm not good enough, I'm a failure, I'm not worthy. 
The other one is trouble sleeping. You may go through in your mind, oh my God, how am I going to fix this? It has to be better. I have to be a success, but I'm not. And then you just keep thinking and thinking. And then that way you have sleeping problems. Even infections, disease may start. You're so, so obsessed in your stress that you may start having pains in your hand. You may have upset stomach. You may have um, heartburn, you may have bladder infections, uh, you may have digestion issues. It just goes on and on because when you are thinking and thinking these negative things, it has a toll on your physical body. Your physical body is an extension of your thoughts and emotions. We know that when you have a negative thought, your immune system goes down for a few hours. It doesn't function as well. So imagine being in that function a long time and constantly through the years. Your body will suffer from that. Your immune system is going to react. We know that when you're positive, your body starts feeling happy. You have more energy. It influences, again, your body. We know this through research. There was even a professor in Japan, Emoto, that made uh, a discovery through water that when he put negative thoughts uh, on water as crystallized water and ice, the, the thought pet, the crystals would make these shapes. So he noticed that if you said words, I love you to water, and then you would freeze it, it would make this beautiful shape, like a crystal, like a snowflake shape. And if you put thoughts like, I hate myself, I'm worth nothing, the shapes were all distorted. And you could see that, um, how it influences just words, but music as well, and, and emotions as well, created these different patterns in the water. And this you can look on Google, you can notice these shape patterns, which are really interesting. And don't forget, our body is a huge percentage, over 60% is water. So can you imagine how much your thoughts are influencing your physical body? These are all things to consider. Let's go to the next part. All right, now as we start noticing those thoughts, as I gave you in the first part, all these sentences that I'm finding and I'm saying often in myself, and a lot of those times you'll start finding those sentences in trigger times, and trigger points. You're having a fight with someone. Uh, you didn't do well at work. Uh, you got hurt or you're sick. Notice in those moments, in those trigger moments, what are those thoughts? And, you know, finding those patterns. Now, when I work with people, that's really my aim, is finding patterns. And I try to find them in this life, like I've mentioned before in other videos, but also their intensity in other lives. How many lives have you been working on this particular core belief? How long have you been saying these types of sentences or feeling those types of emotions? Then you see that if you've been doing this for a while, it's like an aha moment, especially when you see these other lies, what your pattern is, what you're doing. It's like people say, well, I don't really believe in lies. That's okay for me. I don't really mind if you don't believe them. All I'm saying this is that it gives you sort of a time to step back. And when you notice the life, you go, oh my God, that yeah, I do this too in my life. You can think of it as your subconscious or your multidimensional self giving you um, an example of what you're doing in a different frame, in another point of view, so that you become more aware. And this is the point. It's to become aware of your pattern and changing it into another one consciously. You decide. It's not a random thing. Nothing is random. You decide. So I see this negativity that I'm creating in my life and I'm seeing the experiences I'm also having that's negative and it's really unpleasant. I decide to change it. I consciously decide which thoughts I'm going to put. Where do I want to concentrate on? Now, in the beginning, this is extremely challenging. First of all, you have to find those thoughts that you're thinking and saying and feeling all the time. And then you have to sort of pull yourself together and go, okay, I'm, I'm not going to think that. I'm not going to go there. And that's difficult but you have to become conscious of it. And that takes maturity and not any kind of maturity, emotional maturity, which we'll come back later in the future videos to talk about, because that is really the key here is emotional maturity. And a lot of people, when they start doing this process, they ask me, oh, Kim, what's the point of noticing and changing my beliefs? Why do I have to do that? Why do I have to concentrate and work so hard? The reason is, why you're here is to become 
an authentic, empowered being. You, your personal self, becomes an authentic, empowered being. Nothing around you makes you more empowered. It's yourself, your decisions, your thinking, your emotions, what you want to experience. You decide. You become a victim of all these things happening around you. You make the choices of that. And that's when you become an empowered being. We'll go to the next part. So this next part, I want us to see the complexity of our being. Uh, Our experiences are for us, like I said, to become empowered beings, but also we have depth. We are more than this moment. And learning about ourselves in these different areas and is, to, is to create more depth about ourselves, to understand more deeply who we are. And later I will talk about the complexities of our personality. But when we look at our beliefs, we start to understand ourselves more. So if my core is I'm afraid to fail, Well, I'm going to be missing out on certain aspects of reality. And I have examples of how uh, perception can be altered because of a core belief such as failure. So to the outside world, for this is an example, for instance, I may seem very successful and wealthy. If I'm so afraid to fail, I'm going to be obsessed in wealth, in success, and I'm going to work, 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 work to become what I think the projection of success is. It doesn't mean I'm feeling it. The outside world will have a perception that I am. Myself, deep inside, it's not real uh, success because of my fear of failure. My fear of failure is going to drive me to become what I think is a success, even though I don't feel it. Therefore, all my determination comes from being anxious to fail. So we have to be careful. Perception is always, it could be an illusion. What people may think, I could even start believing I'm a success because I'm so wealthy and my work is doing well. But when I have a trigger that something goes wrong, where do I go? Fear and failure. So therefore it's not real because I'm not feeling it deep inside me. I may even become very rigid. Uh, with others and myself because of fear, always doing the things my way where I become like a control freak. You have to do it like this because this is the only way that it goes well. So therefore, I'm going to be rigid with my colleagues or with my family because I have to have it my way. If I don't have it my way, then I'm afraid of failure again. And there we have a, your behavior will start changing as well. It's the same thing also with myself. I'm so strict with myself that I'm also very strict and rigid with my own body, with my own uh, patterns in my life. I have to go to bed at 10 o'clock because I need my eight hours of sleep. I need to eat healthy or else I won't have energy. All those things could be perceived if you're doing it through the motivation of fear of failure. I'm not saying that eating properly is bad here. We have to be careful. I'm asking you what is fueling the behavior. This is what becomes difficult. Is it true because you enjoy and you feel positive when you eat those kinds of foods? Or is it because I'm afraid of death or I'm afraid of sickness or I'm afraid of failure? I have to keep thin. That's a different motivation. Therefore, you're not feeling it in a positive way. I have a conclusion to all of this. So to end all this, this video, I want to finish with this, this thought of the process I want to really try to convey to everybody. The point of all this is to get to know yourself well. And that's more than we can actually, that we're actually doing. What are we thinking and feeling? So what I want to try and say is these behaviors, behaviors where I'm afraid of failure, I'm, af- I'm afraid, and all those thoughts that block me in my, in my growth of being who I want to be when I have this OCD or if I'm rigid or if I'm a control freak. Those behaviors stop me from being my true spontaneous self or to really truly spontaneous creation that I'm able to do. I'm not doing it. I'm too busy going, I'm not good enough, I'm afraid to fail. And I'm just repeating these thoughts and I'm, I don't know where to move. I am not spontaneous and just being myself and flowing. Consciousness is like water. 
It moves. It has a flow to it like water. Even if you block it with resistance, even in yourself, it wants to move. It will keep hitting that resistance or it go around it, but the resistance, it's there. It needs to flow. And that's what we're meant to do is to really flow in a spontaneous way and who I am deeply. And if I can't allow my, and it's to, I can't allow my true self to develop if I can't be spontaneous. I'm too busy believing all those negative things. That's if I know my, what is my true self. So I, how, if I don't know who I am, well, then you have to start looking at what you're thinking and believing about yourself. Once you start discovering the true I am feeling, and even in the Bible they talked about that, the I am, it's a gut feeling. It starts deep in here. That's what you have to find, that true self, and letting that true self flow in its spontaneous self, and its spontaneous creation. Therefore, my authenticity is not developing. It's underdeveloped, actually. Therefore, my reality will also demonstrate those aspects. So if I'm unhappy, that's exactly what I'm going to bring back. It's not real. It's an illusion. Because my true self wants to come out. It searches to come out. That's why we're uncomfortable. Because we know deep down we have a true self. Don't believe the negative. It's not true. You got to keep telling yourself that to finally get to a place where you're just authentically yourself and not being afraid of that authenticity, to actually embrace it, to enjoy it. Because when you do, that's exactly what you're going to put it, pull in as a reality, exactly what you're feeling, which is true bliss and joy. Thank you for watching. <laughs>